Hello and welcome back to a very hot episode of this week's watches. It is absolutely boiling in the UK at the moment, so I apologise for any back, uh, background noise. The AC is on, I also apologise for any sniffles. Hay fever is defeating me this year. Um, but yes, we've got 12 incredible watches on the table for you guys and girls, ranging from modern to vintage to really everything in between you could possibly imagine. This is the kind of diversity I love. We've got Grand Seiko, Blancpain, a watch from a brand most people probably never heard of. Uh, Dubian Shettle brand, I think is how you pronounce it. Tudor, Oris, Vintage Boulevard, Vintage Tudor. Like, it, there was really something for everyone. And I think that's the, the beauty of what we do here at Kibble Watches. And if you are new, every single Saturday we put out new watches on the website, somewhere between eight and 12 watches. Um, there's links in the description for every single watch you see on the table here that will take you straight to the website or let's say you're here just to see this gorgeous vintage glycine you can head to the timestamp that's also in the description and you can skip straight to that one to skip all of my rambling so before we dive into the watches on the table and I'm very excited to get into them what's on wrist I'm wearing something that not everyone's going to agree with this is a beautiful vintage Mido multi 4 extra super automatic the only one I've seen from this period in this configuration with the sub seconds and also the incredibly early Mido automatic movement inside, which is actually a bumper automatic. Um, but it's 29.5 millimeters. Yes, you heard that right. Under 30 mil, I have a seven inch wrist and I absolutely love it on my wrist. I think it looks great. Um, I've even actually had a couple of compliments on it just from people on the train. How we, like, I don't get that often at all. And I think that's kind of amazing, really. Something like this just drew the attention because it is so small, I think. People are looking at it going, what is that? And it probably looks like my grandfather's old watch or something like that and i kind of i kind of like that with these smaller watches but my point with wearing this and enjoying this is i wear it and i enjoy it but buy what you like you know if you like smaller watches it doesn't matter what anyone else says or what the industry standards are so i think i have to keep reminding people is watches have been smaller far longer than they've been bigger so what i mean by that is men and women in general have wore smaller watches in the history of watches far longer than these large oversized watches have been worn that's not to say anything bad about the large oversized watches i own a few and i love them as well but it is to say you know embrace the smaller watches they have their place as well and the value on them is incredible because they are so small people just disregard them um, so you can pick up some absolutely incredible deals but anyway that's enough about what's on wrist my little rant about sizes let's crack on with what you're here to see and we're going to start with this gorgeous grand seiko spring drive Omiwatari, I think is how you pronounce it. So let's take a closer look. So starting this week off with an absolutely gorgeous Grand Seiko spring drive with a impressive dial as always, as you'd expect from Grand Seiko right there. And this is the Omiwatari, which is inspired by the Lake Sewer. Uh, and apparently in the winter it freezes over. In some years a ridge can be seen um, from one side. And Omiwatari apparently translates to where the God walks out over the ice which is kind of beautiful. So um, yeah, you can see really elegant Zeratsu finishing throughout the hands and indices as you'd expect. Applied Grand Seiko logo and a blued second hand which really contrasts against the dial. Beautiful case profile part of this series which is the reference SBGY007G. Nice sign crown at three o'clock and a really nice strap with a push button clasp as you can see. Exhibition case back right there, uh, which has a power reserve on it, right there, which is very, very handy. So this is the uh, manually wound spring drive caliber 9R31. And this model's from December 2021 with its box, sorry, December 2022 with its box and paperwork. And it's in pretty damn good condition. Um, you know, it's, it's been worn. There are some hairline scratches and marks here and there, but nothing too major and definitely one you can put on, wear and enjoy and save yourself a nice chunk of money off retail. So I think that's enough of the, the rambling. This watch speaks for itself. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And this is where without question, this watch completely shines because it just sits on the wrist so beautifully and so flat. It's 38.5 mil by 43 mil lug to lug, only 10.5 mil on the thickness and 19 mil on the lugs. So a little awkward, but there are options out there. But this strap pairing, I think suits it beautifully. So go check out this watch on the website today. From one beautiful Grand Seiko to another. And the first time I've actually had this one, this is a limited edition brown dial uh, SBGR311 
absolutely incredible. So let's take a closer look. And now for another epic Grand Seiko, and this one just as hard to capture, because uh, as always, Grand Seiko make these beautiful dials, but they're incredibly subtle, and uh, they do different things in different lights, so you really gotta play around with them. This is a Grand Seiko Automatic Limited Edition SBGR311, limited to 1,300 pieces, and it's nicknamed the Cookie Monster. Uh, because of the rich dark brown dial, which as you can see has the repeating Grand Seiko symbol right there, kind of like the Whirlpool editions and a couple of others, really, really beautiful. Zeratsu finishing on the hands, a nice gold um, toned second hand as well as applied GS logo at 12 o'clock, which just really pops. Comes on a free link bracelet with a push button clasp and an exhibition case back right there with an engraving on the crystal um, showcasing the limited edition and all that kind of stuff and inside is a automatic Grand Seiko Caliber 9S68 and this one's from July 2020 with its box and paperwork signed screw down crown and the watch is well worn and enjoyed as they should be you know I, I'm happy when I get a watch in in this kind of condition because it shows the watch has been has been enjoyed you know there's nothing worse really when you get a watch that's a fair few years old and it's not really been worn now obviously from a buyer's perspective it's a good thing but for me I enjoy this kind of thing and I would personally pick this up put it straight on and just start wearing it um, which is kind of the nice thing but as always we can have them refinished on request if you so wish um, so let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions here we go on my seven inch wrist definitely on the larger side but still incredibly comfortable at 42 mil by 47 mil lug to lug 13 mil on the thickness and 21 mil at the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap changing nice and easy and 21 you will be able to find out there but it is a little harder than standard so go check out this beautiful watch on the website today now on to a blank pan villaray ultra slim manually wound 40 millimeters with a power reserve and sub seconds gorgeous watch really really special actually and amazingly i've had multiple blank pans over the years and this is the only one that's actually made it to the website all of them were sold before that so let's see how long this one lasts let's take a closer look so as i said on the intro to this one the first blank pan i've had that's actually going to make it to the website and what an incredible one to do that with as you can see you've got hollowed out leaf hands a power reserve sort of hidden away there with the plus uh, just hidden away behind that hour hand at the moment as you wind it that power reserve will increase up until the plus sign which is always handy on a manually wound watch you can see how much power you have left sub seconds right there at six o'clock dates hidden away at three o'clock and applied roman numerals which just catch the light when you get that right angle really nice stepped bezel very iconic of blank pan in my opinion and a nice sign crown at three o'clock as we flip it over you've got the original strap and a push button clasp which is actually like um, sprung loaded so it like snaps into place so keep that in mind it's quite sort of tough until you get to a certain point and it snaps down um, a lot of richard mills have the same sort of clasp just as a random side note um, right there exhibition case back with the number stated down at the bottom and that is a beautiful manually wound blank pan caliber 11c5 an absolute beautiful movement um, and this watch is from November 2021 with its box and paperwork. A really, really lovely example. As I said in the intro, this is the Blank Pan Villaray Ultra Thin Manually Wound Power Reserve uh, in 40 mil. So talking about size, let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we are on my seven inch wrist. You can see that just hugs the wrist beautifully. That sort of perfect, elegant, modern dress watch in definitely modern proportions, but it works. This is 40, 44 mil lug to lug, 8.5 mil on the thickness and 22 mil on the lug. So quite a large lug width size uh, for straps, but again, it really works with the overall design. So go check this one out on the website today. From there over to a Breitling B09 chronograph. Uh, this is the pistachio dial in 40 mil. I love this watch. I sold one pretty much when they first came out a few years ago and the interest was incredible then and the interest is still incredible now. These are great watches, especially for the pre own price, um, or I should say the price we we're asking, which is under five grand. I think that's a hell of a lot of watch for the money. So let's take a closer look. And here we go the Breitling B09 chronograph part of the premiere series and this is the pistachio because of that beautiful dial color which is a very light pistachio green which just plays with the light beautifully especially especially with the applied numerals 
and logo at 12 o'clock it just looks incredible and you have a really nice case profile as well just beautifully done all round and I think this is a testament to the new generation of Breitling we are seeing I think I think it's fair to say Breitling made some of the most beautiful and impressive vintage watches especially with the Navitama range of many other things um, but the modern Breitlings have sort of gone by the wayside until I would say 2019 2020 where they really sort of turned things around and have been producing incredible uh, watches straight out of the gate and really pushing the boundaries some models have been a bit of a hiss for, uh, hit um, a miss for me sorry and some like this have been an absolute hit I think they're incredible so I won't bore you with the reference this one as always with Breitling super long reference but you can see pistachio green dial nice chronograph layout with a 30 minute totalizer at three o'clock so buy compacts with the two uh, registers running seconds at nine o'clock sign crown and pushers at three o'clock and as i say nice case profile with the sort of extra detailing there which really draws your eyes inwards comes paired on its original strap with a push button clasp as you can see add an exhibition case back showcasing that very impressive manually wound brightling caliber b09 movement as you can see um, finishing is absolutely exquisite especially at this price range i think brightling as i say have knocked it out of the park with this watch um, so definitely one to consider if you're looking for a interesting chronograph that's uh, a little bit more left field, especially with how even just the standard Speedmaster Professional is now uh, at the price it's at. So something like this is more worth consideration now than before. October 2021 with this box and paperwork, and I am a fan of the new Breitling box. It's a tiny little uh, square. The paperwork is a little booklet that has a QR code and an NFT and all this kind of stuff. And the actual cushion that the watch sits on in the box, you unroll it and it's a little pouch. Um, I'm a fan of it because I have to store these boxes and ship them out so this is much easier for me let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist very very impressive watch very comfortable as well at 40 mil by 46 mil lug to lug 13 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lugs so really great proportions will fit pretty much any wrist out there so go check it out on the website today now to what i would say is the hidden gem on the table because most people are not going to know what it is and also it's, it's just an oddball it's a really cool watch and for those of you who don't know i have another doobie and shettle brand on the website it's an 18 karat gold version of pretty similar style but slightly older so do check that one out as well but this is a doobie and shettle brand spiral vip triple date chronograph moon phase hinge lugs left hand there's a, there's a lot going on in this watch. Let's take a closer look. For this absolutely crazy contraption of a watch, this is a Doobie and Shettle brand Spiral VIP automatic chronograph triple calendar moon phase with hinged lugs for good measure. I mean, this has got everything you want, including uh, crown and pushers all on the left hand side. Now you've probably noticed straight away that spiral that's attached to the chronograph seconds. Now as we start the chronograph, which is by the way reverse because obviously it's all upside down, meaning that starts, stop and the top ones reset. That spiral, which is a blued spring, is attached to the second hand and just looks absolutely incredible. It's not a split second chrono, it's not a ratropan, it's not anything like that. It is truly a coil, a visible coil on the second hand. And I think it looks really cool. <laughs> so let's go through the complications and how this works because once you know, it's pretty simple. Hours and minutes is standard. Chronograph seconds is that red second hand going round. You have a pointer day, uh, day of the month, which you can see right now is on 21. And you have your month right there next to it, which is obviously showing June at the moment. Your day of the week, which is showing Friday. And then on the top chronograph, uh, sub seconds, you have a moon face right there. You see, really beautiful. And then your hours for your chronograph in the sub seconds at three o'clock, you have your continuous running seconds and a 24 hour to show where you are within 24 hours. And then a 30 minute totalizer at six o'clock. Hopefully that explained that all nice and easy. Um, so now you can see it. Everything is set via the crown, meaning you pull out and you rotate round other than the day of the week, which is done via the pusher at the side. So let's say you set everything and you're on Friday, but you need to be on Monday. You would use this to, to push round um, to get to Monday. Hopefully that will make sense. Nice cabochon set in the crown. As I say, hinge lugs, which are really nicely done with this beautiful de detailing, very reminiscent of hinge lugs 1940s watches with screw spring bars, so keep that in mind. Now the watch does compare on its original strap and push uh, pull 
clasp as you can see I've just taken it off so I can show you the case back of the watch nicely because it is a very impressive thing now as we flip it over you'll see that heavily decorated watch all the details around the outside Dubian Shettle brand engraved on the rotor and this is a modified automatic ETA caliber 7751 so a workhorse movement with a lot of modules and modifications attached to create this crazy watch which I have to remember goes that way because I keep wanting to put it that way but that's upside down so yes the watch is circa 2010s no box or paperwork unfortunately but it's priced to fly especially for the complication so let's show on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist this is definitely the watch for the person who enjoys watches but wants something different to pretty much everyone else you know if you rock up to a red bar or any watch gathering i can guarantee no one else is going to have this and i suspect most people would have never have even heard of it or seen one in the metal so this is 41 mil by 50 mil lug to lug obviously keep in mind that lug to lug will change depending on the position of those lugs and how they hinge 14 mil on the thickness and 20 mil at the lugs so endless options for this one so go check it out on the website today. All right, let's mix it up a bit and go to some vintage. We're gonna to go to this 1956, that's very early, Tudor Oyster Royal with a honeycomb dial in 34 mil. So this is the, the sort of larger size, not the largest size, but not the 32, the 34. So for those of you worried about case sizes after we just spoke about it, this is probably a good size. So let's take a closer look. Now for a absolutely gorgeous Tudor Oyster Royal, this is a reference 7934 from circa 1956 in 34 millimeters with that gorgeous honeycomb dial which is aged beautifully now this watch is all original down to its very early rolex sign crown as you can see and that's the original crown and stem now something to keep in mind as these crown and stems get older they um they don't have as much thread as they used to so you can see that's only got about one turn and when you wind it you can feel it click that's quite normal. It's all working perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with it. It's been serviced. It's running beautifully. Um, but that is just part of parcel of keeping the original crown and stem, which is what I wanted to do because I want that beautiful original crown and profile it provides. Now, if you do want that swapped out because you don't want it to feel that way, by all means, we can do that on request. But I would say just personally, just live with it. 1956. I mean, we're talking nearly, what's that, 70, 80 years old. I mean, it's, it's incredible this thing is still working as beautifully as it is and looks this good. I'm going to look nowhere near this good at this age, that's for sure. So there we go. Now behind this screw down case back, which as you can see has its reference and serial really proudly shown still. Um, this watch has probably been polished once or twice in its life. Um, you know, the case is super strong as you can see. But inside there is a manually wound Tudor caliber 1156. This is just a really amazing example and they come up very rarely like this. So I'm excited to bring this to you guys and girls. Got it paired on a nice suited leather strap, which I think looks really great. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Now this is the same proportion pretty much as my Rolex 6694 that I personally own. So obviously I'm a big fan of how this looks on my wrist. Um, this is 34 mil by 40 mil lug to lug, only 9.5 mil on the thickness and 19 mil on the lug. So a little awkward, but there are options out there. So go check out this watch on the website today. From that to a gorgeous Bulliver Snorkel Devil Diver because of the 666 feet that is stated on the dial. Even has its Bulliver buckle. This is a gem and I would be keeping it if I had more space in the personal collection. But let's take a closer look at this one. Now for this absolutely stunning Bulliver Snorkel Devil Diver Automatic, as you can see, 666 feet, proudly stated at six o'clock, which is the number of the devil, hence the name Devil Diver. Really, really cool watch. And these come up every so often and they often um, are not in this nice of a condition, I must say. The dial has definitely got this beautiful age. The hands have aged amazingly. It still has its original bezel. Now these are friction fit bezels, meaning they just rotate at touch and they are quite loose. Again, as we were talking with the Tudor and the Crown, this is original and therefore it's not going to be perfect. So please do not expect this to maneuver like a modern Tudor bezel where it goes click, 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 click in every position. This is friction fit and it is a little loose and it takes a lot of work, if not near impossible, to get them back to that really stiff uh, original feeling because again just time and age you know it's bound to happen especially when you consider this watch is from circa 1964 which is insane um, date over at three o'clock original crown still present uh, with Bulliver stated really nice profile as you can see 
case is super strong and as we flip it over you can see the dancing lady is really really strong as well this watch has definitely seen a polish wheel maybe once or twice in its life uh, which is always amazing now this is a reference 386-1 and inside is an automatic boulevard caliber, caliber 11 as i say circa 1964 and it's really impressive the fact it comes with its original buckle right there as you can see which is just stunning so a really really wonderful example i've paid it on a suede because i think that looks best on this watch so let's show on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist that looks at home at 35 mil by 43 mil look to look, 12.5 mil on the thickness and 18 mil on the look. So endless options for swapping this one out, but go check it out on the website today. Now on to our first Tudor Alinghi uh, Red Bull Racing FXD with the carbon case. Really, really cool. I'm actually a really big fan of this in person. I think the Red Bull branding is, is very subtle, um, all considered. So that way you could totally wear this if you have no interest in F1 and Red Bull, which I do. I like F1 and I also support Red Bull. Um, but if you don't, this is still totally wearable. So let's take a closer look. Now for the Tudor FXD Red Bull Racing Alinghi, as you can see, Alinghi Red Bull Racing stated on the inner rehaul at 12 o'clock and that is pretty much the only major branding other than the case back that indicates this is a Red Bull uh, watch so again if you're not a fan of Red Bull or F1 I think you can still comfortably wear this without screaming that you're an F1 fan um, really nice deep blue dial with vibrant red pop of the second hand and Pelagos stated right there as you can see um, the snowflake hands and the big square indices again everything you expect and a carbon case a forged carbon case with a titanium bezel titanium uh, crown titanium case back and a forged carbon bezel insert it looks amazing i think tudor have done a wonderful job of this one this is the reference 25707 kn and it comes paired on its original strap with matching hardware which again is titanium and it is a velcro strap so really really comfortable easy to size uh, to where you want it to be and let's show you that case back um, which you can see right there now this is where the the strap has been rubbing on the watch over the sort of time of wear i've seen it on quite a few of them and unfortunately it's just part parcel of a ribbed nato like this on a titanium case back so just keep that in mind inside is an automatic tudor caliber mt5602 which is one of their workhorse in-house movements and this one's from july 2023 with its box and paperwork and it has its correct box and paperwork as well so they have a special box which does feel quite different to the standard tudor box it feels like more recycled materials um, which i guess is the direction a lot of brands are going but yeah let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist as you can see again a bigger watch but it wears very well and of course a Tudor dive watch like this is meant to be on the bigger side so dimensions wise what you're looking at is 42 mil by 50 mil lug to lug 12.5 mil on the thickness and that is not including the nato strap so that does add a bit of thickness keep that in mind and 22 mil on the lug so as long as you've got a 22 mil pass through nato you'll be able to wear it on this watch because those are fixed spring bars so check this watch out on the website today from there over to an incredible oris colbrashier this is the diver 65 limited edition for colbrashier 40 mil with the incredible caliber 401 which is a five day automatic movement um yeah it's a great watch let's take a closer look and now on to a fantastic oris divers 65 colbrashier limited edition in bronze and colbrashier was the u.s navy's first african-american uh, master diver so very very amazing backstory and we we go into a bit of detail on the website about the chap himself as does uh, the booklet that's included in the box so definitely check that out really interesting read and it's great that oris sort of shines a light on on people and and sort of important things in general right they do a lot of charity work and a lot of um Oh, what's it called where they they look after the environment basically they're a good company and we need more companies like that but this is the colbrashire limited edition of 2000 pieces total i won't bore you the reference it's a long reference but this has uh, a automatic oris caliber 401 inside which is an in-house movement which has five days of power reserve as you can see proudly stated at the six o'clock in the sub dial and about the design layout you have this deep gloss blue dial which contrasts beautifully against the bronze by the way with gold accents on the indices and hands 
which are full of loom, signed screw down crown and a bronze case and bezel, which has started to patina beautifully. And you have matching bronze hardware on this interesting style uh, MN clasp, which um, MN strap even, which just looks really, really cool. And it's sort of sprung as well. So it's very comfortable. Let me see if I can show you this case back and just to quickly show you this beautifully engraved case back of testament to Cole Brashear and it just looks fantastic and uh, as I say 401 caliber inside and this watch is from December 2022 with this box and paperwork and it's ready to be worn and enjoyed so let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist very comfortable on this strap dimensions wise what you're looking at is 40 mil by 48 mil look to look 12.5 mil on the thickness and and 20 mil at the look so you could swap this out for a standard strap if you so wish but i think this strap really suits the design and as i say it's very comfortable so go check it out on the website today now over to one of the most affordable watches on the table but the one that feels like you could beat a zombie to death with it this is built like an absolute tank uh, this is a helson shock diver 38 mil uh, blue with the sapphire bezel and yota movement really incredible piece of kit and again for the price under 500 pounds it's just insane that this can be built so let's take a closer look on to a watch that has really surprised me especially for the money that is this helson shock diver 38 mil in blue with the sapphire blue bezel and it's powered by an automatic miota caliber 9015 so as you can see you've got these plunger sword style hands with loads of loom loads of loom on the dial date down there at 430 big screw down crown with big bold crown guards really thick beefy case with this very interesting look design it comes with the tool in the box to to remove all this as well as the links um, if you need which are screw links as you can see and then we get to the links these are some of the thickest and biggest links i think i've ever seen they are incredible uh, you have this big bold clasp as well again going with the design and it has this sprung loaded um, ratcheting dive extension which is very good big milled clasp Solid screw down case back with some shocks right there and a diver. Really, really cool, as I say, powered by Miota inside. And this one's from November 2021 with its box and paperwork ready to be worn and used. This is a kind of watch I want to see it absolutely mangled. I want someone to go diving with it, wear it every day for years. I think the more this gets worn, the better it's going to look because um, it just has that vibe to it. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. And the nice thing about this kind of clasp, when it's a bit hot, you can just pop it open a little bit. And then you've got that micro adjustment on the fly, especially for a hot day like this. So 38 mil by 46 mil look to look, 12 mil on the thickness and 20 mil at the looks. So it's quite compact, but it is a big beefy watch, but it wears incredibly well. They've sort of mastered the size of a big watch <laughs> whilst not making it big. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but go check it out on the website today. Now onto an incredibly rare 70s Zodiac. This is the Hermetic Aerospace Jet 24 hour dial 34 mil. So it's a true 24 hour dial, meaning that our hand goes around once every 24 hours as opposed to twice. So you have to sort of double check when you check the time at first. But yeah, let's take a closer look. Now for a really rare and not a watch you see often at all. This is the Zodiac Hermetic Aerospace Jet with a 24 hour dial. And that dial is a glossy black, which makes it quite hard to capture, but it's absolutely beautiful in person. Nice tritium little dots throughout the dial, as well as the hands and the pops of red really make it glow as well. So let me show you how this works. So right now it is showing 10 past eight. And as we go here, this is midnight. This is all pretty standard stuff, but let me show you where 6 a.m. is. We are now at 6 a.m. Now on a traditional watch, you'd be at three o'clock. Hopefully you can see how slow those hands are going round at the dial. This is a true 24 hour watch, meaning one rotation of the hour hand every 24 hours as opposed to two. So it does take a second when you're quickly glancing at the watch to tell what the time is, especially if you're used to wearing, like most people, a normal 24, uh, 12 hour watch. This definitely takes a second. Original sign crown at three o'clock as we flip it over. Nice case back as well with a little fish right there. And inside is a manually wound Zodiac Caliber 721. And the reference to this watch is 758. And it's from circa 1970s. I date it to very early 1970s. If not, it could be possibly late 1960s. But I think more than likely early 1970s. That's the only trouble when you get to certain brands, certain watches of this age. They don't have like sequential sequ um, 
serial numbers that you can use as a, as a dating process and they don't really have archives or anything like that. So you're basing it off the movement and other factors as well. So that's where I have dated it, paired on a black suede strap. I think it looks fantastic. So let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. You can see that just looks absolutely fantastic. The proportions are great at 34 mil by 40 mil lug to lug, only 9.5 mil on the thickness and 18 mil on the lugs. So endless options for this one. So go check it out on the website today. And last but by no means least, a really beautiful Glycine Automatic 41 with a date crosshair dial. Um, really, really gorgeous piece. And I think just a great value, again, under 500 pounds to get into a really nice and unique looking vintage watch. Let's take a closer look. Now for a wonderful and underrated Glycine Automatic 41 with a gorgeous silver crosshair dial, as you can see, which just begs to be sort of seen in direct light. The dial is slightly curved, which again gives this really cool illusion um, as you rotate it, that the whole thing's shining. Very, very cool on the crosshair, as you can see throughout. Dates proudly at three o'clock and nice sword hands as well as applied indices. It's just a nice looking watch. As we flip it around, you'll see a crosshatch signed crown and a signed snap-on case back. And inside there is a automatic ETA caliber 2452. So a workhorse ETA inside, which is always nice. And the reference to this one is 645 uh, from the circa 1950s. So quite an early piece, especially with that logo which is an early Glycine logo with the arrow. Really, really cool, nice thick lugs, and you can see you've got all those original chamfers proudly showing right there, super sharp. So now let's show this beautiful watch on the wrist, because again, that's where this one really comes to life. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, I think that looks perfectly at home and just looks great. So this is 34 mil by 42 mil lug to lug, 10 mil on the thickness and 18 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap changing nice and easy. So go check this one out on the website today. So there you have it guys and girls. This week's drop, a few more vintage pieces. I'm trying my hardest to get them through, but as I've said in many other episodes, modern is easier because oftentimes it comes in and it's ready to go. Vintage, it may need a new crystal. It may need taken apart to be cleaned nicely. Um, obviously servicing and things like that. These things take time. And sometimes when you get into the nuts and bolts and you're servicing, some issues arise and you need more parts and it just it keeps going on so sometimes it's not uncommon to have a vintage watch and repair for months um, before i can bring it to sale the great thing is when you buy from a place like us you will obviously pay more than let's say you find a similar watch to what i'm selling on ebay from a private seller who has no service history and no records you can get a guarantee of a warranty with us so we warranty everything 12 months either waterproof or non-waterproof obviously with vintage or in general anything that's more than 20 years old i do not warranty as waterproof even if i get it pressure tested and it passes the reason being that's in that exact moment under those exact conditions and the older a watch gets the more variables there are that can determine whether a watch will stay waterproof or not for example a seal in a bezel um, or the crystal itself that can start to deteriorate and you know water can get in and those kind of things so i just it's safer not to do it get a nice modern seiko or a dive computer if you're actually going diving right so do it at your own risk that's what i say but in regards to vintage uh, everything's warranted backed with our warranty and that's the good thing you know you get what you pay for so let me know down in the comments what's your favorite in this week's drop to be honest i absolutely love everything on this table i think the dubian shuttle brand is absolutely bonkers really really cool the blank pan is just beautiful the tudor honeycomb is amazing the boulevard just looks great everything has its merits so i look forward to hearing what is your favorite in this week's drop and as always we'll see you again next week next week's drop is also looking incredible some really beautiful special vintage watches coming up and um, that i've been working hard for so yes we'll see you all again next week take care